As we continue our discussion with uh, multiplication, we're going to now bring it in from whole numbers into using decimals. And we're going to start right where we started with whole numbers, and that is with our multiplication patterns, timesing by tens. Okay. So as we look at this, 0 0.32 or 32 hundredths times 10. Because of the beauty of place value and timesing a number by 10, this is super simple. We actually won't even do it like that, and I'll show you why it doesn't work in just a moment. Okay, so we have 0 0.32 times 10. I am timesing in essence. When I times by 10, I am just timesing by one place value. So, as we look at this, timesing by 10, the way that I remember is there's one zero in there, and so we move the decimal one place. Okay? One zero equals moving the decimal one place. The reason why I did it to the right is because I'm multiplying by a whole number. That number is going to get bigger. So, 0 0.32 times 10, I move that decimal just one place. One place to the right because I'm multiplying. Now, if you're thinking about division, exactly, you're actually going to move it to the left when we're multiplying by 10, 100, 1,000, and so on. So now, if I'm looking at 32 hundredths times 100, there are two zeros. So I'm going to move that decimal place two spots. So I can start right where it's at. One, two. And I put it there. So that equals 32. Two with that decimal. Now that's just a whole number. That whole number doesn't need to show off its decimal. We already know it has that invisible decimal, so we can actually just erase it. So, but we have it right there. 32 with the decimal. 32 and nothing simply equals 32 holes. Okay. Now 0 0.32 times 1,000. There are one, two, three zeros. So when we're multiplying whole numbers with zeros, we add those three zeros onto the end. But this, we move the decimal place three times. So now this gets a little tricky because I move it once, twice, and then there's nothing there. What do I do? I still move it three times. And I put the decimal there. See, I moved it once, twice, three times. Now because there's nothing there, nothing is basically the same as zero. So 0 0.32 or 32 hundredths times 1,000 equals 320. It started there. I move it 1, 2, 3, and I fill that in with the 0. Remember, I'm trying to get a bigger number. That's why I go to the right. If I go past all those digits, I can add in that 0 because it also works 0. 320 or 320 thousandths equals the exact same as just 32 hundredths. So I could move it 1, 2, 3. If I want to start that way, then I just have 320. Okay. The reason it doesn't work with the algorithm, we start right here. 0 times 8 is 0. 0 times 7 is 0. This is actually the 10, so I have the 0 there. So I'm times 10 times 8, which is 80. So 1 times 8 is 8. And 1 times 7 is that. Now, ordinarily, we would look at it this way, and we would simply add 7.8, 7 and 8 tenths times 10 does not equal 780. If you're multiplying decimals, look at this. There's one digit past the decimal. There's one digit to the right of the decimal in this problem. In the problem, one digit after the decimal. Therefore, in the answer, there needs to be one digit after the decimal. If there are two digits past the decimal to the right of the decimal, there are going to be two digits in the answer to the right of the decimal. Okay? So however many digits are after the decimal in the problem, same in the answer. So I have right here, I add the decimal, there's one digit to the right of that, and that equals 78. Or I can do it the easy way, and just be like, I'm timesing by 10 which means there's one zero, so I just move it one time, and I get 78. There you go, multiplying patterns with decimals.